hello and welcome to the second lecture of the course on quantum entanglement and non local games so i am dheeraj and today we will be completing the analysis for uh, the chsh game so we will in fact be showing a lower bound quantum lower bound for chsh game Uh, so before proceeding, uh, I would like to make a few remarks. So first is that uh, there were a few students who were also asking me about a good reference for prerequisites. Uh, so for prerequisites, uh, you can actually look at uh, the second chapter of Nielsen and Chuang, or you can also look at the first two chapters of Nielsen and Chuang book. And uh, by the way, for those who haven't uh, yet subscribed to the channel, please do that. Yeah, you can also like the video if you want and subscribe to the channel. That way, you will be getting the notifications for uh, the further lectures which uh, I'll be uploading in this channel. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So, let me continue. Another remark which I wanted to make was about the equivalence. of bias probability uh, bias which is beta and success probability of the game so these are two equivalent notions and uh, i'll just show why they are equivalent so it's just a small idea that we define bias of a game as probability of win minus the probability of lose and a probability of lose is also 1 minus probability of win. So, which shows that bias is actually twice of probability of win minus 1 over 2 or probability of win is actually beta plus 1 by 2. So, the idea is that uh, whether you improve the bias or you improve the probability of winning these are two equivalent notions, right? So, we can use either one of these two since they are linearly related. And uh, in fact, sometimes it happens that uh, analyzing the bias is more easier. So, we'll use bias in that case. And in fact, even today, we'll see that in order to show the lower bound, we'll be showing a lower bound on the bias, which automatically also implies a lower bound on probability of winning the game. Okay. And... Uh, so here, uh, yeah, from this expression also you can see uh, that, uh, so suppose we have a probability of win of cos square pi by 8, right? Uh, I think uh, this is also what we showed last in the last lecture that uh, for CHSH game, a quantum strategy gives a probability of winning to be cos square pi by 8, right? So uh, you can check that this will correspond to a bias beta which equals twice of probability win minus 1, right? So this is twice cos square pi by 8 minus 1, which is cos pi by 4. Yeah, so you recognize this uh, trigonometric identity, uh, which is nothing but 1 over root 2. So, in fact, uh, so these two are equivalent, having a probability of win to be cos square pi by 8 or the probability uh, or the bias being 1 over root 2. In fact, uh, we had seen last time uh, that uh, when we analyzed the operator based strategy right so we had the alice and bob were sharing an entangled state psi and uh, they each measured an operator based on their inputs s and t and uh, we saw that the operator strategy gave a bias of 1 over root 2 right but that's also equivalent to the other version of the strategy we saw which which uses the basis measurements uh, and that give a probability of success of cos square pi by 8, right? So, these two are essentially equivalent, having bias as 1 over root 2 or probability of success being uh, cos square pi by 8, okay. And uh, another remark I wanted to make uh, was about um, the historical background of CHSH game. 
so okay so uh, so uh, you might be seeing that we use this uh, maximally entangled state a lot right and on two qubits it corresponds to the epr states which which is equal to uh, 1 over root 2 0 0 plus 1 over root 2 1 1 and uh, you might be wondering that why do we have these initials what are these so these initials do stand for einstein podolsky and rosen and uh, in fact, in 1935, uh, there was a paper by these three authors. So, E, e stands for Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen. Yeah, I'll actually share a link to this paper. And uh, that paper roughly questioned that is the idea of quantum mechanics complete? So, is quantum mechanics complete? Right. And they argued that it is not, and they use this sort of a state. So this is like the high-level idea. If we represent the state in, in terms of qubits, then they took something similar to this state, and they show that if there are two parties which share a qubit each of this uh, of the state, and uh, when they make a standard basis measurement, uh, either both of them will get a zero or both of them will get a one, even if they are separated apart. Now here. Uh, so, so the paper actually uh, uh, mistakenly they were believing that this is leading to some sort of faster than light communication, right? Because even if you are separated say miles apart or let us say even light years apart and uh, if you measure this state, you are going to get the same outcome and uh, they made a policy that uh, you know that. Uh, if they are getting the same outcome, they also know the outcome of their partner once they receive their own outcome and somehow it is like causing some sort of faster than light communication, right? Because you are instantaneously you are able to know the outcome of the other player also which happens to be your own outcome. Uh, but the counter argument is that well, there is no faster than light communication going on over here. Uh, the reason being that you cannot send a message of your own choice. So, suppose if I say I want to send a 0 to the other party, I cannot do that, right? So, it only depends on the measurement outcomes. But however, they believe that well, it is inconsistent with the theory of relativity and then they argued that you know, there must be something else behind this quantum mechanics. It is probably not the right thing and uh, they proposed something called a local hidden variable theory and Einstein throughout his life, he pursued that local, local hidden variable theory and uh, later this CHSH came right so the initial stands for uh, there, there are four names yeah so actually I, I will point you to the uh, name of this uh, uh, I will point you to the original paper for CHSH so originally this was a game which was proposed in 1969 and uh, then later in 1974 uh, Bell uh, uh, so, Be Bell took this scheme and uh, proposed this as a test for um, uh, whether, whether the current quantum theory is right or whether we need some local hidden variable theory. So, and this test was actually performed in lab later and uh, after this test it was proved that uh, we indeed uh, that, that this uh, CHSH scheme, uh, it, it indeed gives a higher success probability. So, there is no local hidden variable theory sort of uh, which can explain quantum mechanics and uh, we need to uh, deal with this idea of, uh, of a quantum state and measurements and the way we currently formulate it, right. So, there are some problems with the current formulation for example, like what does it actually mean to measure for example. So, those are still there, however, uh, it is just that uh, at least there, uh, there is no scope for a hidden variable theory, there is no classical hidden variable theory which can explain this quantum behavior and uh, the CHSH scheme, right. So, this test, so we saw that the quantum players can get a probability of success of cos square pi by 8 versus uh, the best classical one, which is a probability of success of 3 4. So, that indeed holds true, ok. Uh, yeah, so this is verified experimentally and this is indeed a proof for quantumness also. Another remark I want to make, is about uh, the expression for bias. So, so, bias 
Yeah, so this is remark number four. Bias for CH such game. So uh, we'll write an expression for this bias, and uh, in fact, we also used that expression for the bias when we talked about the operator-based strategy in the last lecture. Uh, so this expression for bias assumes assumes that we are analyzing a plus minus one valued outcome game. Uh, what does it mean to have plus minus one valued outcome? So initially what we saw is that in the game we saw earlier we had uh, Alice and Bob each receiving an input S and T which was a single bit lying in the range 0 and 1. Now here we have the same set of inputs but earlier the outputs were also single bits which were 0 and 1. Now we encode outputs as minus 1 and plus 1. However, earlier we were taking the condition we needed was that the AND of the inputs S and T equals the XOR of the outputs. Now we will write the winning condition as minus 1 to the power S and T equals the product of outputs. And uh, the reason we do this is because, so if you see uh, the the XOR of A and B happens to be 1 if they are unequal, right, and 0 if they are equal. Now, here correspondingly what we have is that if they are equal, the XOR is, uh, the product is 1, but if they are unequal, the product is going to be minus 1. So here minus 1 corresponds to unequal bits and 1 corresponds to equal bits. Right? And so in the condition when S and T is 1, right? what we need is that AB is minus 1 that they produce unequal outcomes. When S and T is 0, that is uh, if either of S and T is 0, then S and T is going to be 0. Uh, then in that case, we need equal outcomes that A must be equal to B. Only in that case, we will be able to get AB is 1. Right? So, equivalently, we can also write it as AB times minus 1 to the power S and T equals 1 if A and B, Alice and Bob, they win the game. And minus 1 if they lose the game. Now the bias which equals probability of win minus probability of lose will turn out to be expected value of this AB times minus 1 to the power S and T. And yeah, so you can just check this also. that this quantity is 1 if they win. So, the this expectation is actually probability 1 times probability of win plus minus 1 times probability of lose. And yeah, so, it agrees with the definition of bias which we gave earlier. Okay. So, uh, so actually now we can have a very good closed form expression for the bias in terms of this expectation. Now, the strategy which we look at is as follows that Alice and Bob, they share an entangled state psi cat psi and on input S and T, we have that Alice measures a binary observable A sub S. So, it is a binary observable which uh, means that the measurement outcomes will be plus 1 and minus 1, right. So, this agrees with the, with the way we have defined this plus minus 1 game. And uh, on input T, Bob 
measures a binary observable b sub t okay so in this case our by uh, so okay before coming to bias the expected value of a b given s and t is going to be psi as tensor b t psi why uh, because uh, if if we look at as the then it, it produces an outcome a uh, and uh, bt the measured random variable is p and uh, we had seen earlier that when we take tensor product of observables the eigenvalues are going to be the products of eigenvalues of the original observables and in this case uh, if if i take the expected value of as tensor bt then it's it will actually turn out to be the expected value of AB. So, if, if I take AS tensor BT and I sandwich them between the shared entangled state psi, then I am essentially going to get uh, the expected value of AB given S and T. But what I actually want is the expected value of AB times minus 1 to the power S and T. And uh, so, what I will do is that I will average over all the inputs S and T and I need to take into account the distribution of these inputs S and T okay. and then I, I can just take the um, expectation given S and T. Okay. So, expectation of A B times minus 1 to the power S and T conditioned on S and T and uh, assuming a uniform distribution on the inputs we have pi S T is 1 fourth and from this expectation minus 1 to the power S and T can come outside the rest of the expression uh, expected value of a b given s and t is something i already derived which happens to be psi a s tensor b t psi okay and uh, last time what we did was that i actually gave you uh, the values for a s and b t so and uh, these these were operators and i asked you to verify that this bias turns out to be 1 over root 2 right so, I hope you would have verified and, uh, in any case, uh, we had also shown a um, basis measurement based strategy wherein uh, the success probability of co was cos square pi by 8 which we have just seen that that is also equivalent to bias of 1 over root 2. Now, the question which comes up is, is it possible to have a bias greater than uh, 1 over root 2? Can I improve that? And the answer is no. The best bias is always upper bounded by 1 over root 2 for even for quantum players. So, how do we show this lower bound? So, that is what we will see now. So, in order to prove this lower bound, I actually need to uh, lower uh, like if if I uh, if I can actually uh, so sorry this yeah so actually we are upper bounding the bias uh, but uh, I'm calling it in a sense of I'm calling it a lower bound because uh, usually in the uh, sense of uh, complexity theory in computer science we always uh, we always call the negative results as lower bound so upper bound is something you achieve and lower bound is something uh, which which is the which basically limits you to achieve something so it's a kind of a misnomer but yeah let's let's just call it lower bound uh, but what we are trying to show is that beta is less than or equal to 1 over root 2 okay uh, so that's what we'll try to do that, uh, and uh, so essentially what we'll show is that uh, this this quantity, this summation, is less than or equal to one over root two, and uh, in order to get a handle on this expression, first I'll need to define two quantities. So I'll define ket v sub s as a s tensor i acting on ket psi and get w sub t as i tensor bt acting on psi. 
So AS and BT are binary observables. So here is the first homework for today. Show that a binary observable is unitary. So it's just a single line proof and uh, you can also write it in the comments that will also help me know if you are able to follow the lecture okay so uh, now given that uh, as and bt are binary observables and from this exercise we'll be able to show that they are also unitary so um, as is unitary so as tensor i is also unitary and since psi is a unit norm vector and this is a unitary operator so ket vs is also going to be unit norm similarly ket wt will also be unit norm because bt is also binary observable which is unitary and then the tensor product is also unitary and so uh, this uh, vector which we will get ket wt will be unit norm vector so uh, what we are saying is that norm of ket vs and equals to 1 and norm of wt is also equals to 1 okay and if you see this expression again we had we have terms of this form that is psi as tensor vt psi now what i can do is that i can expand out this inner tensor product as as tensor i times i tensor bt and this as being a binary observable is also hermitian and i is also hermitian so overall the tensor product will also be hermitian so overall what i can do is that i can also express this as as tensor i dagger right it will also equal as tensor i only and the reason i did this is because i can take this right part and use the definition of wt to be i tensor bt psi so this right part happens to be w t this left part is the conjugate of v s see we defined it as a s tensor i acting on this side so overall this term is going to be v s in a product w t now i can look back at the expression of bias again which was this summation and here what I'll do is that I'll replace these terms psi as tensor bt psi by vs dot wt. So beta of g is going to be one fourth of sum over st minus one to the power of s and t then I have vs dot wt. So actually uh, it's cumbersome to always write these bras and cats so I'll just write this inner product as in the form of uh, the usual way we write dot products. So it will be v0 dot w0 that will come with a sign of plus 1 then plus v0 dot w1 plus v1 dot w0 and minus v1 dot w1 because when both are 1 then s and t is going to be 1 so we will have minus sign over here. And now what I will do is that I will combine the V0 terms and I will combine the V1 terms. So now I have dot products so and we need to show that this is less than equal to some quantity. So let's use Cauchy Schwartz. Maybe that will help. So I can write that this is less than equal to one fourth of norm of v0 times norm of w0 plus w1 plus norm of v1 times norm of w0 minus w1. Now v0 and v1 are unit vectors so their norm is going to be 1 and so what I am left with is that 1 fourth of norm of w0 plus w1 
plus norm of W0 minus W1. Okay. And uh, how do we upper bound these? So, there's another homework for you to prove. For all A, B in R, A plus B is less than equal to square root of twice of A square plus B square. Okay, so, I can give you a hint. You can either use this AMGM or you can use Cauchy Schwartz. So, both are going to work. But uh, whichever you use and if you are able to prove it, please write that in the comment section. Okay. And uh, assuming that this inequality is true, what I will do is that I can now upper bound it by less than equal to, I can say, less than equal to one fourth times twice of norm of W0 plus W1 square plus W0 minus W1 squared. And now if you expand out the, these two sum of squares, so you will see that there will be norm W0 square which will come twice, there will be norm W1 square which will come twice and then there will be inner products which will cancel out. So overall what I will see is that this two sum of squares will be actually twice of norm w0 square plus twice of norm w1 squared and uh, so this happens to be twice of uh, and norm w0 square and norm w1 square are also 1 right so twice of 4 and this is nothing but square root 8 by 4 which will happen to be 1 over root 2 so what we have shown is that the bias is less than equal to 1 over root 2 or uh, this is equivalent to saying that probability of win is at most cos square pi by 8. Yeah, we can't do better than this and uh, so this essentially says that the strategy which we have defined so far is the best one for quantum we can't do better than that however it still beats the best classical strategy right. So, it, it still improves our classical, but yeah, this is the best we can do even in the quantum regime. Okay, thank, thanks a lot. So, in the next lecture, uh, we look at the magic square game. Okay, thanks and bye.